now? Should I go? Yes, God has given me go ahead that I should marry her. But should I go ahead? Would my income be enough? You know, value of decision. At that point in time, you need a pastoral, godly pastoral counsel to guide you. All right. That's why Joel 3.14 is saying here. He's saying that multitude, multitude in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. We at times were in that valley to make decisions. But thank God for counselors, godly counselors that are there. Wisdom, knowledge, a gift of a spirit of assignment. They will have it. And the moment you sit down and you are talking, the Holy Spirit is talking to them. And the Holy Spirit is telling them how to put you through the problem. And by the time they finish with their counseling with you, your heart will rejoice. You can't go home the same. Praise Master Jesus. It gives no room or chance for gamblers in the church where the counselor, the counseling unit or intending Christian couple is being handled or well coordinated by genuine minister of God. That is, it prevents young men or women from involving in dating or going out with more than one suitor at a time. Do you know some say they went to pastor? And they took three names. These three men wants to marry me. Which one should I be? Have you not heard of it? Have you not heard of something like that? Or some men will go say, ah, I have three women I'm dating. Which one should I marry? Can you imagine? When you meet a godly counselor, by the time he finish with you, by the time he finish with you, dress you well, well, <laughs> you won't get them before you call all of them and say, I've cut it off. I'm not dating any one of you again. Because that time, that man, will, the counselor will, will have to rededicate your life to Christ and then preach Christ to you all over again. I ask you to give your life to Jesus that you've not known Christ at all. But when you meet, you know, a, a godly counselor, it helps a lot. You know, so that those ones that are that they are like a gambler, they want to gamble. EJ, EJ, should I pick this one? Should I not pick this one? Because they are dating three, four people at a time. At that point in time, when you get to a council, like I said. The, the, the spirit of discernment already have already told them the kind of person you are. And then they will deal with the issue according to godly way. Let us see Proverb 13, 20. And somebody... Uh, okay, I have to pick now. Read Proverb, Proverb 13, 20 for me. And you. You. You will read for me Psalm 73, verse 24. Now, Proverb 13, 20. He that worketh wise men shall be wise, but he that comprehension of fools shall be destroyed. Hmm. 13, Proverb 13, 20. He that worketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be what destroy. When you walk with the wise people, when you walk with godly people, you yourself will be a wise person. But when you follow the fools, the Bible says that person will be what? Be destroyed. So let us see Psalm 73, verse 24. And afterward, receive me to glory. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward, receive me to glory. 
by the grace of God and his mercy, we all walk in the counsel of God in Jesus' name. We walk in the counsel of God for our life, for our destiny, and for the purpose in which God has created us for in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. It brings about decent takeoff of courtship between two children of God as the pastor becomes the mediator between the intending young couples. It helps to take up a decent courtship. A decent courtship. Where would a man, your wife will be going at, you'll be saying, eh -heh. you told me, it's tea time. You went out, you are not back. Where, where did you go to? You've gone somewhere else. Because there's no trust. He knew when, he was dating, when they were dating each other, when they were cutting, that is, he wasn't the only one that the girl was cutting. So maybe uh, you say, ah, I was so lucky. That is me that married her. So you've married her now, but still, his mind is not settled. Believing that he's still seeing the other guys. And you cannot go out. You cannot move freely. You'll be monitoring. And then he will be the one, you know, dictating the time you must go out, the time you must come in. Can there be any peace in such marriage? That, can there be peace in such marriage? No. The man himself will not be at peace. The woman herself will not be at peace. Because what? The foundation of the marriage was not straight. It was not properly built. There, was, there, there have been some um, comma in the marriage. So they don't trust each other. They don't trust each other. The woman, I, I know some that say, ah, immediately my husband comes in like this. Once I pick his phone, all the message, all the message, I just transfer it to my phone. I drop his phone. So in my own time, I'll sit down and read every message that come into his phone. I say, what? For what? Ah. It's for like, hey, you don't trust men these days. I say, ah, ah. How did you people started? That you don't trust him. <laughs> Please. Always. Like he says. It's about decent takeoff of courtship between have a decent and a good take off say she be i want to marry you now does not matter let us go and sleep with each other she be i'm going to marry you did i say i will not marry say yes wait till you marry me hello tell him go and wait till you do what you marry me proper the bible say when the foundation is what when the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? So you must lay a very good foundation. And when you have a godly counselor from the beginning, they will put you right. Praise Master Jesus. He showed the young contemporary adults that marriage is not bondage or an unavoidable entanglement. You know, some people say marriage is calm. I don't know if you heard. I've heard some young people saying it that mar marriage is not scam. It's an institution ordained by God and is meant to be enjoyed. In fact, in marriage, you can start experiencing heaven. Heaven right on earth before you get there in your marriage. If you get it right. Praise the Lord. That's why you must pray. You must pray. You must pray very well. Don't say because A and B did their own this way and it works for them. And you decide to follow that pattern. No. The only pattern that will not fail, the only pattern that is sure, is when you follow the dictates of the Bible concerning marriage. And don't run for counseling. Go for... I'm telling you some couples here will tell you that the counseling they, they had when they were about to, to get married, they're thanking God for such counselor 
that cancel them. I'm telling you, some will tell you. And that has been a help to them in their marriage. When they come to some situation in their marriage, they can remember all the things that the counselor told them and they go back to it and it works for them. Praise the Lord. So let us read quickly Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah 23, 22. Jeremiah 23, 22. I didn't call you, sir. Now, you. Hey, you. Please, let me give her. Jeremiah 23, 22. You've not opened it. Then uh, give it to the young one. Okay. Okay. But if they are stood in the council and they had caused my people to hear me, what my words, then they shall have trust to them. Then they shall have trust to them from their evil ways and from the evil of their doings. Praise Jesus. He says, For if they had stood in my council and had caused my people to hear my word, then they should have turned them from their evil ways and from the evil of their doing. So when you listen, listen to a counselor, even like, like the one I told you, they are my friends. They've met in university and they've been sleeping with each other. But when they were about to get married, they said, the moment they went to the counselor that they about to get married, the counselor looked at both of them and said, you guys have been sleeping with each other. That is spirit of discernment. So you guys have been sleeping with each other. They look at each other. They couldn't say a word. They say, now, kneel down. They kneel. And he prayed for them and asked God to forgive and have mercy on them. And said, now, uh, God has forgiven you. But henceforth from today, you dare not what did I say? Say you, madam, if you go near his house again, eh, till you get married. They told me themselves. Because they've got married before I get to know them. Like I said, I have young, young couples as my friends. So they told me. And since then, till they got married. So I'm trying, that's what the Bible is saying here now. When you know, you will turn them from their evil doings. That's what Jeremiah 23, 22 says. It was saying that, 23, 22, it says, But if they have stood in my counsel and has caused my people to hear my word, then they should have turned them from their evil, evil ways and from the evil of their doings. Praise the Lord. I believe that what that counselor did at that point in time. And he did the counseling for them. And they got married. Praise Master Jesus. Before I conclude any question. Marriage and counseling. Any question? Any question? Then I want to ask. Why do some young people did they find it difficult to go for counseling before their marriage I find that a lot of um, young couples these days they don't go for counseling in fact reading will tell you how many months about six months Pastor Shala am I correct for counseling for six months because they know the journey is far. The journey is for the rest of your life. There is no turning back. So they cancel you. But I find that that some people, instead of canceling and doing it in their church, they will go to their parents' church. They will go to their parents' church in 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 in, in Oshobo, or they will go to their parents church in Elisha 
and said, my parents said, we must do the marriage in their church. Even when the church said, okay, no problem. You can do it in your parents, but we still want to do counseling with you. They will say, no, they are, we'll do our counseling there. Hello? Because they are hiding. Why is this so? Please, don't, it's not a laughing matter. It's things that is happening. It's what we are seeing. Pastor Shola, am I lying? It's what we are seeing in church. It's what we are seeing. They won't want to come for counseling, but they want you to do the marriage for them. They want you to join them. If you can um, do accelerated counseling within one month for them, they don't mind. Because I have, a, I have a, a nephew that came in from Dubai. And within two weeks, he said, Mrs. Tammy, we are doing introduction. We went for within one month, he said, they, want, they, they, are, they have given end date. They want to get married. I said, which church? Where? Because I can't understand. I said, did you go for counseling? I said, they, they have done it. They did accelerated counseling for them. Can you imagine? I don't want to mention the church. I don't want to mention church name. But he came back within two months that he came back. He got married. Why is this so? I don't know. Why, why are they running for counseling? Maybe there's something they know. Do you to know that we, the pastoral, who don't know? Sir, they don't know anything. I said, why are they running for counseling? Why do they they don't want they don't like coming for counseling? Why? Please, I need answer. Yes, mommy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will just use myself as an example, actually, because when I wanted to get married, and uh, yes, I will use myself as an example. My husband advised okay the dad's pastor the dad's i mean the parents pastor Church. that we're supposed to go for counseling and i was like there's nothing they want to say that i don't already know yeah. that i have parents i've seen everything about marriage so to me i just feel oh, i know everything they want to say there's no need to waste time even when we wanted to do the registry before the proper married we were meant to go for counseling for like a month i said no i don't have time i know what they will say and again i feel these days maybe the youth does, do not really have the time. Maybe they are always very busy and there's no time for them to go for counseling. But for my own, I remember very well that was just like, mm, I know it all. There's no need. But Ma, if you are to you know, get married again, if they ask you to come for counseling, will you? Did you see any need for that counseling? All through your married it's life? It's still 50-50. It's 50 50. I might, I might still not. You might, you might not still go. Yes. Please give it to Bishop. No, give it to Bishop. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are so many things that are involved. One, faulty foundation is involved. Faulty foundation. Another thing is lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like Mommy has said, that I know it all. The other thing is the perception of marriage. Don't you believe that marriage is a. It's a contract that, like, man, you like uh, maybe you're only playing man, you today, tomorrow is in Chelsea, tomorrow. So, if it doesn't work, I work out. Mm. So, so many things, so many factors are involved. Mm. Because some people don't see that, uh, they don't believe that one is a lifetime contract. Mm. If it doesn't work, I work out. So, mm. why should I go for cancer? I want to put him in bondage. Some people see as a, as a let me just uh, have my child of my own so that if it doesn't, you know, a lot of things are involved. It's not only. It's not pinned down to one thing. There is faulty foundation. There is lack of knowledge. There is the perception of marriage. There is even wrong. Some people do, they, they do some things online now. They believe, oh, I can go and do it online and log on to one. I was forgetting that the culture that we are trying to see online is not from our own culture here. So, so many things are involved, man. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, brother. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I think one of it is that she used to make some we youths because me too I'm a youth I used to make some of us to run for marriage counsel in these days is that uh, <laughs> please, God, please now is that uh, some of us used to we used to know that 
the people that want to go and meet for counseling, they know more than us. The, that is, I mean, the pastors that want to go and they, yeah. and then they will not, they will not have any sympathy for you to tell you the truth. So some we think that if we go now, and maybe during the process of that counseling, maybe the pastor might expose me or say something that that I that I don't really want maybe my partner to know. And that one can make this person to run away from me. Okay. I'm, Praise the Lord. That, that, I, oh, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. That that thing used to make some youth to look that okay. Hey. So because some are they claim that they know. Actually, they don't know anything. I mean, some of we used that used to claim that ah, wait, see, wait, what if they want to tell me that I've not seen? What if they want to tell me that I've not heard? Uh, is a lie. We don't really know anything. But we know. That if we go and all these people are cancelling us, they are going to tell you nothing but the truth because they are not the one that want to marry anyway. You are the one that want to get married. So and then they know that if you eventually they go and bring problem, to, to go and bring problem and expose and uh -huh, to go and bring problem for them, you will not become a burden on them. So then they don't want you to become a burden on them. So they will expose everything, tell you everything that you needed to know. So due to that, some are running for marriage counseling. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, give it to Rashola. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, I think there are so many reasons why the people run for marriage people counseling. People run away from counseling. Counseling, generally. One, a black mindset. A normal African man feels he knows it all. And it's general. I remember when they said that uh, I wanted to get last week card. I've been driving for like 18 years then. So they said <laughs> you should get last week card. Okay. So I went and they say we have to do a training for two hours. We'll sit down two hours. I say, yeah. Look at these people. Even on campus, I drive myself from Lagos to my glory. What do you want to tell me? These people, these uh, rubbish people, just want to waste my, my time. By the time I wanted to renew that card, I wasn't struggling. I wanted to go and sit down again to hear something. I was shocked that somebody could tell me something in two hours I've not, I didn't know for 18, for 18 years. years on the road. So we must always have this open mind to learning. You know? Number two is that African people are always not truthful with themselves. So we always want to run away from the truth. Like the couple, let me call them couple, who came here sometimes, you should remember. And uh, they've been staying together, we didn't know. And they said they are brothers and they sisters. They said no. No, this, uh, there's another one. The one that you people went to visit and they say we should not come again. Oh. By the time we called them, they were first timers. Yes, I know that. And we were talking to them, you no. Know, Oh, you stay in the same house? Are you married? They say no. The guys say they intend to get married soon. Okay, that, that's good, but you, you, you have been staying together. Like, when are you likely to... To get married. The guy got uncomfortable. You could see straight. He was just enjoying free meal, no pay. You know? <laughs> it was not comfortable. <laughs> And by that, people went there later in the day to visit them. They say we should not come and visit them again. And I pity the girl. So yes. we are like that. We are always afraid the counselor may touch somewhere we don't want One him or her to, to talk about. Mm. So we will not come. So ignorance, that not being truthful. Of course, the third one is the counselors themselves. 
You know, these days people come for counseling and the next Sunday you are hearing the story on the, the altar. And they won't come again. They won't come again. So, God will help us. Amen. Well, somebody is raising hand. Yes. Please, let me give it to him. And who has Yuma? Okay. Give it to our dear sister, Anita. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, uh, that is say something now that I see thing, uh, I wanted to like talk about. That it talks about maybe like pastors, maybe you come to a pastor's and those tell you kill they are attending couple and the next Sunday you hear. So that reminds me something. I like in the aspect of the pastors too, I notice that these days I don't know, maybe it's because of maybe the work issue, the work hour or two. We see even some pastors, they will even be the one advising some intended couple that hey, you guys don't just worry, don't bother to come for, don't worry, we'll be doing maybe online counseling for you. You can do Zoom. And I noticed that due to that, it doesn't really allow some is it, can I say intending couple or so to really you know know some of the truth that they needed to know I remember I've met with some people that they have shared the experience of how they go through their own counseling during their own time that even there is somebody that will even tell me that they will travel all the way from from north from east down to the place that they needed to come and receive the counseling and they will sit down there they will receive the counseling before they still go back to their station but these days the way church is moving or maybe the place that church is moving to they are not really helping maybe well the... I, I i for me is 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 possible if let's say the the wife works in abuja okay the husband works in lagos you know, and they want to get married. <laughs> they can do it online. It's possible. They can do their counseling online with their counselor. They can do it online. What I knew, but that six months will be six months. Once is the, is your counseling time, you link up. Yes, the wife is there, the counselor is there, the husband is there, and they are doing it. It's possible, and they can still achieve the same purpose and the same aim. So it's possible because, um, like I said, there are no couples that the wife works with First Bank in uh, in Abuja. The husband was with printing a mint in Marina, in Lagos. And they want to get married. The winner says she should be coming every Sunday from Abuja for counseling. No. Or that the husband should be going to Abuja every Sunday for counseling with Boko Haram on the road. No. So it's still possible that they can do it online. Praise the Lord. Please, let me give it to Sister Anita. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. I just thought of a few reasons that might be the issue why okay. people run away from counseling. counseling. Okay. A few years back, I know of a pastor that his choir member, one of his choir members walked up to him and told him in my dialect that, Pastor, I am looking for a husband in my dialect then i think the next service they had the pastor made reference to that he used that word to preach and he mentioned the sister's name he didn't mention the sister but, but the few sister people know. already knew that it was that sister that said that thing then that sister ended up getting married but without the knowledge and the consent of that pastor, pastor. she left the church 
and but problem. that does not mean that she didn't go for counseling you know, in whatever yeah. church she got she went okay to i i may not i didn't know what happened but uh, uh, okay. she did not attend counseling that church again. in that church okay. and she left the church that's one secondly i know of a, a an older lady living close to me before she attends a church a very popular church she's a choir member in the church she tries to make me her friend which i i kind of try to get close to her as well not knowing that she was looking for somebody to open up to mm. her to tell her problems to so the first day i went to her place of work she downloaded so many things to me how she has attended so many weddings in her church how she has sang for so many couples yet her own was not coming forth so she was not asking me what can I do? I said, don't you have counselors in your church? She said, eh, they have counseled her. They've spoken to her so well. I said, okay, what was the things they told you about? She said, eh, they've always advised her to wait. That you have sung for so many people during their wedding. Wait so that you to somebody will sing for you. I said, okay, so that's fine. Why not try and wait? So she was like, but the problem is the men coming to her that they are not ready to go through that path. I was like, ah, that's where the issue is. So she was looking for somebody to tell her, oh, go ahead and do it the way you want. Get pregnant and you are married. That's okay. secondly. Then the third one, I know of a pastor in Uyo. He passed on recently. So please let me just say something about the second person. You see, the Bible says some people have an itch, itch in your hair. They want to hear what they want. They just want somebody to say, Go ahead, it's okay. Hello. So they 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 get to themselves teachers that teach those things that they want to hear. So she's expecting yeah. them obviously or because you of her to age. Say, yes, to say, ah, your age, go ahead. And the, the, the people that will tell you that David have how many wives? Solomon, so those are the people she's looking for, oh, so that yeah. she can be comfortable, so that she, that will not prick her heart that she's doing something wrong. Yeah. So you have done right by so, saying she should listen to her counselors, counselors yeah. that told her to wait. Okay, last. But Bible said in his time it makes all things beautiful. Okay. So lastly, there is a pastor in Uyo that passed on recently. He's also a marriage counselor. He's so tough. He's very very tough. When, it, when you come to him for counseling, when it comes to marriage, there are so many books he will want you to buy. He is very strict when it comes to counseling. So I feel these three points I just made. The first point, just, what, just like what Pastor Shola said, the pastors. Secondly, the age. They might feel, ah, if I've waited this long, if this man has finally come, why am I wasting more time going for counseling? Then the third one is impatience. So many youths are not patient enough to sit down to listen to the truth. And they don't want to hear the truth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, I, I beg of you, if you are not married, first and foremost, prayer is key. If you refuse to pray now for it, when you marry, that prayer that you refuse, to, you will pray it. Because your eyes will see what? Pepe. By that time, you will now be calling Jesus. God, help me. God will ask you, did you call me before you went ahead? And they say, yes, I do. Praise the Lord. Because God would have told you, if you have prayed through, God would have told you if you should go ahead or not. God would have revealed some things to you. God would have, like mommy said last, last week, you are not be hearing God. It's only when you want to get married. And I say, I, I had God say, that sister is for me. Or that brother is for me. You've not been hearing God before. Because you now see the sister now. You know, pretty. Has money. Working in a oil company. Now you start hearing God quickly. Say, God told me. God said it. That that sister that just came to the church. That's why they are using that uh, Range, Ro Range Rover. That she's my ordained wife. You will put divine ordained wife on it. They will start hearing God. God help us in Jesus' name. 
you must pray through. When you pray through all the hidden things, God will reveal to you. But the Bible says, even the deep things of this world is open unto God, the Lord. So I conclude by saying, pastoral counsel is usually born out of divine inspiration and is meant to show the possible way out of certain problem. It's also guide on what to do so as not to fall into the same problem over and over again. Praise Master Jesus. If you look at the manner underneath there are some notes you are asked to take note of. God will be our wise counselor in the multitude of counselor purposes I established. May your foundation never be destroyed in the name of Jesus. God will restore your former glory. Good counsel turn us from evil ways. The presence of many counselors bring peace. It bring peace. And then in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety. When you have multitude of godly counselor, there is safety. You know, I used to tell people, you know wedding ring is three. It's three. But you find that the people used to they use the engagement and the the marriage ban, the marriage ring. The engagement has um, a stone. And then the marriage ban is round. That means it cannot be caught. You cannot say I'm no more doing. It can't be caught. It's banned, it's round. Do you know how the third one looks like? It's three rings. I don't know why they removed the third one. The third ring has something like S on top. S. And you know what that third ring is called? It's the bridge over the troubled water. It's the bridge over the troubled water. When trouble comes, there is a bridge. You can bridge it. Who is the bridge over the troubled water? Jesus. Jesus is the bridge over the troubled waters. There is no way you will not face one challenges in your marriage. But be sure when you have it right, when your foundation is sure, be sure that Jesus is in it with you. Praise the Lord. Let us rise. It's just one prayer. I want you to pray for yourself. You say, Father, please connect me to a godly counselor that will give me godly advice. That will make my marriage a better one on this earth. That will make my marriage a sweet one on this earth. That will make my marriage heaven on earth for me. I want you to pray. Ask God to connect you. If you need that counselor, if you need that counsel, that God will connect you to a godly counselor. That will give you godly advice. That will give you a godly counsel. That will make your marriage heaven on this earth in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The vigil for sanitation member this Friday are cancelled. So, if you are member, please, Oh, I didn't see this. Ah. Uh, okay, we are saying that the um, sanitation department has VG this Friday. Say so others are welcome. So please, you can join them. We are to VG to pray. You can join them this Friday. There is a VG. So God help us. So you are welcome. Then don't forget, Thursday is faith clinic. Please let us come and pray. And as we pray, God 
we answered our prayers in Jesus name our father and our God we thank you so much for your word and for the teaching of today I pray for every youth in this place that are not yet married oh God I pray help them to choose right help them to trust you to choose for them help them oh Lord to go for a godly counseling before they said yes I do in the mighty name of Jesus and for those young ones that have already married, Lord, 